Today is Thursday, January 19th, and you should be reading Mark chapter 14. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some things that I noticed in this chapter. Then I'm going to talk about things I learned about Jesus and things that I learned about people. And finally, I'm going to end with a next step that I can take and a next step you can take. And so things, things that I noticed in this is in the beginning, in this first section, it's where the woman is pouring perfume on Jesus. And they're all like, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you being wasteful? But Jesus, he says something. He says in verse 8, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Jesus is saying, she, she was preparing me for my death and for me being buried in the tomb. And it's like this little foreshadowing, like it's coming. We know it's coming and, and it's about to happen. And he even ends this, it says, what she has be t- done will be also be told in memory of her. And I think that's just really interesting because that's what this story is. It's being told about her. And other things I noticed in the Last Supper section, it talks about why we take communion. And I, I really like this passage. And it says, Jesus took the bread and given thanks. And he said, take this, this is my body. And he took the cup and said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. These two items, these two symbols that we take even now to remember Jesus's body and his blood as, as reminders of what he did for us. And he's, he's showing this to the disciples before his death. He's saying this, this is going to happen and you're going to do this to remember and to, to, to think about as, as we go on. And then there's so much in this chapter, guys, and it's, it's really interesting. And in the Gethsemane portion, it talks about Jesus is praying and says, take my cup from me. He, he doesn't want to be in pain, but he's willing to die anyways. And, and so, yeah, those are some things that I really noticed in this chapter that I thought were really interesting. What, what I learned about Jesus is that Jesus doesn't want to be in pain. He doesn't want to die, but... He's going to do what God wants him to do. He says, yet not what I will, but what you will, what God will. He's going to do what he has to do, even though he knows about the pain that it's going to cause. And he doesn't want to feel that pain, but he's willing to. And also, Jesus, he knows our hearts. It says, you know, he says to Peter, you are going to deny me. Peter's like, no way. But Jesus, he knows how Peter's going to react and Peter doesn't want to be embarrassed which is kind of what we learn about people is we we sometimes we can become self-conscious about what people think of us which is why Peter just owns Jesus when Jesus is being after he's arrested it says Peter denies knowing Jesus and why does he do that because he's almost like he's embarrassed and we do that sometimes we get embarrassed and then we stop sharing we stop doing what we're supposed to be doing for God but we also can become repentant at the end of Peter just owning the last sentence in this in this chapter says and he broke down and wept he realized what he'd done we realize what we've done and we we regret it and we become repentful of that and we we turn around we start doing better and also it's really easy to lose focus in the Gethsemane chapter as we're as Jesus is praying to God and talking to him it says three different times he found the disciples sleeping and sometimes we we lose focus. We are sleeping when we should be focused on God. And and that leads me to our next step. It's to focus, to look at God and to focus on what he's doing, to stop sleeping, to stop ignoring what we're supposed to be doing and to get moving. And now practically, what does that mean to focus? Like we can talk about that, but it, it's to To take the time to to center your life and to look for opportunities to share the gospel, to love other people, to to show grace and forgiveness. It's to look for those opportunities and to center your whole life around God so that those things overflow from you, so you can love. And and so yeah, that's that's really I think the next step is to, to focus on God so much that you're looking for ways to share Him with others and to share his heart with everybody around us. And now I'm going to read chapter 14. And so if you need to go do other things, or you've already read the chapter, or you just don't want to listen to it being read, feel free to take off.
but if you want to listen to me read it, go ahead and stay on, and I'm going to get started. Now the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread were, the only, were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left and went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were, sitting, were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. And they were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me? It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted empathetically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here, keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if, it, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. 
When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son, is man, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with soldiers and clubs, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The man seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guard and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days will build another not made with human hands. Yet even there, then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I do not know or understand what you were talking about, he said, and went into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow was one of them. Again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, you, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I do not know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. And until next time, you are sent.